Hi, everybody. Hello. Come on in. Just going to wait a few minutes. Everybody can join us. What's the weather like? Stacy is joining us from Pennsylvania. We were just talking about the difference in climate. What, what was today like? Is it hot there? Yes, so full on summer, um, high 80s. Whoa. Muggy, very hot. <laughs> so I was holding off, turning on my air conditioning until Memorial Day, and I made it, but just barely. <laughs> um, By the skin of your teeth. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it was 90 yesterday super hot so um what about what about massachusetts kind of cool yeah like 60s today right really yeah, oh. yeah it's been hot though prior to this right yeah today was kind of a nice reprieve although it's rainy today welcome welcome everyone thanks for coming to our special story time tonight we're just letting people come in such a good book we're going to talk about tonight I mean, really, this could not be more perfectly timed for this season. The end of school, the start of summer, the treat everybody wants this time of year. So good. Might have to get some. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that's, that's very plain. <laughs> I know, I know. I went with the vanilla because I didn't want to get all, I panicked while I was purchasing this this morning I didn't I didn't know what to do <laughs> with all the flavors <laughs> so I got the vanilla and I figured I could you know <laughs> add my own stuff exactly that's where they yeah. started too that's where they started right yes yes um Lisa why don't you tell us where you are so I am in Newton which is right outside, oh, it's west of Boston, about 15 minutes outside Boston. And um, I am in my home office where I do my writing and my psychotherapy. So perfect. Um, yeah. I love seeing, and I see your little book in the back. I love that. I'm always peering at people's bookshelves. All right. It's fun. Uh, Those are over there. <laughs> so I move I see the yeah. Stacy, I can see the book over your shoulder too. I, yeah, it's, it's, Prominently displayed, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. This is great. Yeah, um, okay. Studio, actually, which is why it's such a mess, and I apologize for that. But it's it's never really cleaned up ever, which is a good thing because that means I don't have anything to do. So. <laughs> right. So. I think it's great to see people's creative process. <laughs> you know, truly, the space and the. And we get to, we're gonna get to see Stacy do some live drawing in a little bit, everyone. It's gonna be really exciting. Feel free to, to say hello in the chat, by the way. We love to have a lively chat during these um, events and uh, authors and illustrators love to see your comments. You can say hi and tell us where you're joining from. Tell us what your favorite flavor is of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I'm kind of partial to the chubby hubby myself, honestly. I like peanut butter in the. In oh, yeah, the, I love Chubby Hubby too. Yeah, you mm. can't go wrong. Can't yep. go wrong with Chubby Hubby. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to put in the chat too right before we get started. If anyone wants to pick up a copy, hasn't had a chance to get one yet, you can do that with the link I just put in. So, welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here tonight with our special pajama story time evening event. This is our last virtual event of our spring event season. I am Casey Robinson. I'm the events manager at the Silver Unicorn Bookstore, the fabulous Silver Unicorn Bookstore in Acton, Massachusetts. And I'm so excited tonight to have both the author, Lisa Robinson, and the illustrator, Stacey Innerst, with us tonight to talk about their newest book, The Sweetest Scoop. It's really good. If you haven't read it, picked up a copy already, you really, you really need to get a copy of this. It's the perfect, it's the perfect actually gift for this time of year. Any of your end of year teacher gifts, lib teacher library gifts. Um, and we're going to talk about, you're going to get to hear it and you're going to get to see some of the drawing in a little bit. So excited. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for being here with both of you with us tonight. 
Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, same. Okay, so what are your favorite Ben and Jerry's ice cream flavors? I feel like we need to get this out of the way right away. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, okay, <laughs> so, well, Chubby Hubby, Coffee Toffee Bar Crunch. Mm -hmm. um, my husband prefers Cherry Garcia and adds extra uh, cherries and walnuts on top. Mm -hmm. um, so those are sort of household favorites. Yeah, for me, it's always been Cherry Garcia, you know. Um, I, I mean, I love the name and, you know, it's just so clever. And then um, once I tried the ice cream and my cat loved the ice cream. So basically uh, we get it for the cat and, uh, you know, for ourselves. So <laughs> I'm not sure it's healthy for a cat, but she will not be denied. So um, always Sherry Garcia. That seems to be the favorite. I see a couple of folks in our chat saying Cherry Garcia too. Um, Lisa, I was wondering before we get started with the actual reading of the story, can you tell us a little bit about how this book idea came to be? Sure. So I was sort of in between projects and sort of not sure what I wanted to do. And my agent actually tossed it to me. She said, what about Ben and Jerry? And I said, well, maybe, because I didn't know much about them other than delicious ice cream and their social activism. So uh, my family and I went up to see the factory and I was like, this is cool. And then I listened to a podcast that um, sort of wove in their story about their childhood and their childhood friendship. And then I was like, okay, I can do this now. So that was, that was enough to kind of get me going to do more research and, and actually decide to commit to the project. So that's- Oh, I love that. I mean, any idea that, that, uh, that prompts a research trip to an ice cream factory, I feel like that's a win-win. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yep. And Stacy, yep. when you, um, when you got the manuscript, what was like, what did you think? What did you, did you connect with the story right away? Of course. Yeah. I mean, it was so easy. Um, the writing was just so great. And, and it's such a great story. Um, two regular people, kind of, you know, contemporaries of mine. I've kind of grown up with Ben and Jerry and their whole story. So, you know, I, I was already familiar with the whole, the, their story. And, um, and it's about ice cream. And I just thought, I've never actually had the opportunity to paint ice cream before. And it was a lot of fun. It was actually much, I was a little intimidated at first because believe it or not, painting food and making it look ed edible and you know appetizing is really hard. Um, it's harder than you might think. So, you know, that was that was the big challenge, but I, I just loved I loved um, making this book also because, um, the first thing I thought of was tie dye and the, um, you know, the colors for this book are way outside of my comfort zone. I mean, I, I usually use muted colors and these are, these are day glow psychedelic colors. And, um, that was a, that was a great exercise for me just to, you know, pump up the color in every page. So yeah, it was fun. It was a oh, lot. that's great. Okay, I feel like now we need to see the book. We need to, we need the story time to begin so we can all appreciate the story, the words, and the um, psychedelic illustration colors. That would be great. So okay. Lisa, you wanna share your screen? And... I am going to share my screen and hope that I can be successful in sharing the screen. Let's see, uh, getting there. Got it. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Okay, let me move the bar. Okay, the sweetest scoop and I am bringing along my friend here to tell the jokes in the book. Maybe I'll put on my left hand so that I can do everything with my right. Okay, the sweetest scoop, Ben and Jerry's ice cream revolution. Close your eyes and imagine holding an ice cream cone. Now, take a lick. What does it taste like? Chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, a cool swim on a hot summer day? What about wavy gravy, truffle kerfuffle, or chubby hubby? What's the scoop on those wacky flavors? Let's find out. It all began in 1963 
As luck would have it, two groovy guys, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, met when they were 12 years old. Although Ben liked art and Jerry liked science, they still found lots to do together. They tooled around on bikes, camped out, and scarfed down slice after slice at Sam and Tony's pizza parlor. Ben and Jerry loved all kinds of food, especially ice cream. One summer, they figured out how to mix ice cream fun and making a buck. Ben drove an ice cream truck and Jerry came along for the ride, scooping ice cream and telling goofy jokes. Where do you learn how to make ice cream? In Sunday school. What does a cat like to eat on a hot day? A um, ice cream cone. After high school, they went their separate ways. Ben dropped out of college to become a potter. No one bought his teapots. Jerry finished college and wanted to become a doctor. Every medical school he applied to rejected him. Defeated and discouraged, they met up in New York City to brainstorm what to do next. If they started a business together, they'd be their own bosses and they'd make it fun. What did they love to do most? Eat. They rustled up a plan for a bagel delivery business. Every Sunday morning, customers would receive bagels, cream cheese, lox, and a New York Times. They'd call it UBS, United Bagel Service. Except they didn't have enough money to buy bagel making equipment, foiled. But Ben and Jerry didn't give up. They loved ice cream too. So they read a book about how to make it. Good news, ice cream was cheaper to make than bagels. Sweet. What do ghosts put on their bagels? Scream cheese. Next, they whipped up a list of places to open a shop. Since students love ice cream, they searched for college towns. Burlington, Vermont had four colleges and zero ice cream shops. Perfect. They rented an abandoned gas station. The roof leaked, ice coated the floor, and the toilets were broken. So they patched the roof, fixed the heat. Oops, I'm sorry, my screen is blocking my words here. And called a plumber, but they didn't have enough money to pay the plumber. Then Jerry had a brilliant idea. Offer the plumber membership to the Ice Cream for Life Club as payment. Ben pointed out that there wasn't an Ice Cream for Life Club. So they started one. The plumber happily joined. Do you want to be a member of the Ice Cream for Life Club? Me too. Next, they had to solve a bigger problem. How to make ice cream. Teamwork was the answer. Jerry, the scientist, experimented with cream, milk, sugar, and eggs for the ice cream base. Ben, the artist, crafted clever combinations of chocolate, caramel, and cookies. After a few failures and lots of taste testing, they created a formula for the kind of ice cream they wanted. Rich, creamy, and chewy. Seems like a yummy job, doesn't it? How do you make a milkshake? Give a cow a pogo stick. Finally, on May 5th, 1978, the doors of Ben and Jerry's homemade ice cream shop opened and people came, lots of people, but there were still some bumps on the road ahead. Why did the ice cream truck break down? Because of the rocky road. For example, how could they make lots and lots of toffee, coffee toffee bar crunch if they had to cut the toffee bars one by one? Chop, chop, chop. It took forever to get through a 20 pound box. Frustrated, Jerry hurled a box to the ground. The bars broke into just the right size pieces. From then on, they climbed a six foot ladder and flung the boxes to the floor. Don't try this at home and still more challenges turned their way, like how to make their flavor stand out. There were already so many kinds of ice cream for sale. What if they dreamed up fabulous flavors with cool names like Chunky Monkey, Fish Food, and Dastardly Mash? They welcomed customers' ideas too. An anonymous postcard arrived suggesting Cherry Garcia, named after a popular musician, Jerry Garcia, the cherry ice cream with fudge flakes quickly became a hit. Some flavors flopped though, 
like sugar plum, a mix of plum and caramel ice cream, or au pear, pear ice cream with almond and fudge, and peanut butter and jelly, peanut butter ice cream with strawberry jelly swirl. But by now, Ben and Jerry knew how to face failure. First and foremost, stir up a silly solution. And so to honor and remember dearly departed flavors, they opened the flavor graveyard. Epitaphs commemorate Bovinity Divinity, Fossil Fuel, Vermonti Python, and many more. Why couldn't the skeleton go to the graveyard? She had nobody to go with. And then just when they thought everything was chill, along came the ice cream war. Pillsbury, a big food company, threatened to move its ice cream from stores that sold Ben and Jerry's. The stores panicked and refused to stock their shelves with Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Ben and Jerry's was blocked. Once again, it was time to get creative and get a little help from their friends. Their SOS message appeared everywhere. Buses, plane banners, billboards, and bumper stickers. Thousands of loyal customers protested the blockade. They called and wrote letters to the Federal Trade Commission. Finally, Pillsbury backed down and Ben and Jerry returned to selling their ice cream throughout New England. By 1987, ice cream lovers could find Ben and Jerry's ice cream in stores all over the United States. But Ben and Jerry wanted to do more. They'd grown up during the 1960s, a time of turmoil and change as people marched in the streets demanding civil rights for all and an end to war. These causes matter to Ben and Jerry, and they believed they could use ice cream to help make the world a better place. Why not start with their employees? They paid them well, they invited them to bring their dogs to work, and every day workers took home free ice cream. Next came the factory and its effect on the environment. Bleaching paper for ice cream packaging releases chlorine, a harmful chemical, into local water supplies. So Ben and Jerry invented a carton that doesn't do that. They also looked for other ways to make ice cream that didn't hurt the planet, like reducing waste and using solar panels for electricity. But they wanted to think even bigger. They decided to donate profits to causes they, care, they cared about. Playful ice cream flavors would spread the word, save our swirled, to promote awareness of climate change. Imagine world peace to demand an end to war. I do, I do to support same-sex marriage and empowerment to call attention to the unfairness of the growing gap between rich and poor. Finally, they formed the Ben and Jerry's Foundation to support social and environmental justice around the country. More than 20 years later, the foundation is still going strong. So, the next time you enjoy a cone of Ben & Jerry's ice cream, you'll know that it's made of a lot more than cream and sugar. And that one lick at a time, you too can dream of making the world a better place. Now that's sweet. And if you uh, get, get a copy of the book, you can see there's a note in the back, a little bit about the how, why, when, and where of making the book, as well as a timeline of um, Ben & Jerry's um, story with their, from their childhood, including the fact that they were both born in the same hospital four days apart, but didn't meet till 12 days, 12 years later. Um, and that's that. Just having my snack right here. <laughs> I was eagerly eating this while I was listening. I highly advise everyone on this call to go get some ice cream real quick before Stacy does his demo. I hope it. it's required for this reading. That was so great, Lisa. Thank you. I was I was saying earlier to Lisa before before we all got on together that one of the things I love about this book is, of course, or like how something started is always an interesting read, and especially when you can tie it back to someone's childhood. So the fact that they were born in the same hospital and they were friends, and then they had these kind of crazy ideas before they landed on ice cream. I love those stories. But then also, you know, they were successful and then they, can, they, they kept dreaming. They kept thinking about how they could do bigger and better things for the world around them. 
And that's such a cool place to land in a picture book about this kind of thing. Like, like show showing, you know, how you can be creative as a child, how you can start something successful after trying and failing at other things. And then how you can continue to bring that out into the world and really change the world. I think that's such a, such a wonderful, such a wonderful, cool thing about this brand that we already all love, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it, it strikes me too. It's why I love doing nonfiction, um, you know, picture books about real people because their stories, this, this story reads like a, like a fiction story. I mean, it's two friends that did, decide to do something incredible and you know try to change the world and but it's a real it's a real life kind of story and depiction of real people and i think it's it's inspiring to see people that can do that yeah lisa when you were doing your research um for the story was there anything that that was like a big surprise that you didn't know about them I don't know if there are any big surprises, although I, I mean, I had no idea that they'd face so many failures, including, you know, Jerry wanting to go to medical school and Ben wanting to become a potter. So those were sort of small surprises. There was an interesting piece I kept trying to weave into the story, um, but just couldn't work it, which was that Ben has anosmia, which uh, make, makes his sense of taste and smell be very minimal and decreased. Yeah. So he really relies on texture for you know his kind of old you know tasting experience and so that was one of the reasons that they were so into like all these like chewy and large you know yeah because he just can't have he doesn't have much taste and smell so that was i i kept trying to work that into the text and it just it just didn't work so yeah oh i think that's really interesting i mean talk about turning something that you could potentially see as a flaw about yourself into something that is actually, you know, a game changer for your, for your product and your business, yeah. right? Cause it, cause it is, I mean, that is part of the experience of Ben and Jerry's ice cream is the texture and the way that things are combined. Definitely. Yeah. Ooh, that's interesting. It is. Yeah. Um, Stacy, did you have to do an, any, uh, any type of your own research for this process? You know, I did, but it wasn't it wasn't quite as extensive as you know some other kind of historical books that I've done. This one was much more fun. It was um, like I, I looked up their original ice cream truck, and I found pictures, and I could do most of my research online, which was really nice. Um, and I found pictures of them when they were young, um, because they've kind of documented their whole their whole career pretty well. Um, you know, they were right out, they were in the public eye from the time they were, you know, pretty, pretty young guys. So um, I found a lot of material. Um, but it was, yeah, it, you know, I, so much of it was just kind of, um, it was fantastic sorts of things I got to do, you know, a factory with flowers coming out of the smokestacks is not based in reality or anything. So <laughs> So I got to uh, I got to take a lot of liberties with this, one, which would which made it so much fun. Um, but but actually, the the biggest challenge was distinguishing who was who, and making them um, distinct characters throughout the book. You know, because they do kind of look alike in a way. They both wore glasses, mm -hmm. both had beards. Yeah. At one point. So I kind of had to figure out who was who and um, give them different characteristics. Yeah, I was just trying to find a spread to pull up for people to see. Um, yeah, so you can see, I mean, you did an excellent job with doing that. And that is, I mean, that would be important. <laughs> you would want to know which one was which all the way through, right? And they had to age through the book too, which is kind of interesting, you know? Yeah. Went, you know, they went from kids to, uh, to adults, so. Yeah, it was, a, it was a little bit of a challenge, but you know, fun. A good kind of challenge. Good uh, we have a question from Lee, um, and feel free if anybody has questions, throw them right in the chat. We can keep we can keep an eye on that and just um, ask uh, Stacy and Lisa. Um, uh, 
Lee's talking about loving the how you tied the, the front and the back cover together. Let's see if I can show it up here. Um, how did your idea for the artwork come about and come together? So what was that sort of bigger process like for you? Oh, well, it was um, working with the Abrams is always fun because they are, you know, their, <clears throat> their slogan is the art of books. And so, you know, they take the art seriously. And I absolutely love that. And I always, I've done working on my third book with Abrams now, but, but I've, I've done another book and they always go the extra mile um, when, they're, when they're putting together the art. Um, actually, the front and back cover wasn't my idea. That was, I had a different back cover. Um, and there's the case cover. Yeah, this is. This um, is yeah, Lee just said, he, I, I didn't realize Lee that you were talking about that, the case wrap. I mean, come on, look at this. Oh yeah, yeah. That's spectacular. That's the other thing of anybody, especially kids who are on this call right now, if you, if you have it, if you don't routinely peek under the cover to see if the case wrap is different, you should, if you can, it's not a library book. That is fabulous. Oh, I, and I, it's, it's such a joy to be able to do that when you're, when you're making a book too. You don't always get to do that. And yeah. The little things that make such, make such a difference. So was this your idea to do this? It, it was, um, but they, you know, they have to sign off on doing the case cover because, you know, when you're making a book, you think about cost and those sorts of things. So yeah. that's an added cost. And they're, they were willing to do that, um, which was great. Yeah. Could you show that. us a little bit about how you draw? How you drew the I, characters? I, I, I'm, I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> on my whiteboard, which is a pretty basic um, drawing material, but I like to paint. I assume you can see that now. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to draw basically, I, I had three characters um, to concern myself with in this book. Uh, one was the cow and I'm doing this with a mouse on my computer, so it's not the best drawing. I apologize for that. But you can see I started with very, I start when I'm sketching these things, I start very simply. And so it's not much different than this. But um, I like the cow to be a pretty prominent character in this book. And I started, I studied cows a little bit. And I love the way their ears kind of go off to the side like that. They almost look like, I don't know, you, the first time you think of drawing a cow, you think, well, it's got horns. And um, I, didn't, I didn't really include horns on my cows, but I love the way the ears go off to the side and they're just this beautiful pattern of um, spots. So let's see if I can make this work. So it's very simple. Um, and, and I always start drawing simple, very simple shapes. And I talk to schools from time to time. And I always tell them that if you can draw a triangle and a square and a circle, you can draw just about anything because these shapes are basically just kind of slightly more complicated circles, squares, rectangles, triangles. Um, and that's where I start. I start with the very simple kinds of shapes. So there's the cow, hold on, let me do something slightly. I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to these things, so I don't wanna leave it too. I want to be good. All right, so I've got the eyes. Um, but anyway, that's one of the characters and then to bring it to life, I might add something like, whoops, let me change the color. Add something like a tongue for the licking of the ice cream. <laughs> um, pretty simple stuff. 
And I like to keep it simple. For this book especially, I kept the drawing very simple. Um, so there's a cow. And then the other characters, I was talking about how I had to distinguish between Ben and Jerry. And so I gave one of them throughout. It was uh, Ben, who was the artistic one. Um, I gave him the hat. <laughs> And I'm not sure why, I, I think he is, the in my research, I think he was the one that sort of wore this bucket hat um, in pictures of them when they were young. So he was the one, Ben, ben was the artist and I kind of gave him a, a funny hat and he had a beard. Um, they both have glasses. So because I was keeping it so simple, I had to give them very distinctive kinds of features that would, that would be able to set them apart. So this is Ben. Okay. Oh boy, all right, need a bigger brush. So that's sort of Ben. <laughs> and then um, Jerry was the scientific one. So he was slightly slightly more conservative, I guess, even though they're probably neither one of them are conservative <laughs> at all. But I think it just in appearance, I gave him kind of, you know, kind of curly hair because that's what he had when he was when they were young. And I was kind of basing their personalities on. Um, what they looked like when they were in their 20s, you know, kind of just out of college. Um, they were kind of activists and, you know, wild and crazy guys. So um, Jerry had glasses too. And again, this isn't, I'm drawing with a mouse, so it's a little hard, <laughs> but. No beard, even though they both had beards. I uh, I just gave I just gave Ben the beard just to distinguish them. So I had th these were the three main characters, and then I had um, you know lots of children that were sprinkled throughout the book. So this was kind of what I was working with throughout the book. And then a lot of the drawing was, um, and this is what I try to do in all of my books is try to pump up the action a little bit. So you've got, you know, people are doing things, they're active and they're, you know, they're, they're expressing themselves with their hands and their arms and things like that. So, so I always try to, to make it look like these characters are alive. And a big part of that is using their hands. So if you don't know how to draw hands and hands are hard, I'm not gonna lie, hands are really hard to draw. Um, because your fingers can move in a thousand different directions. I mean, hands are so complicated, but if you break them down into very simple shapes, it's a lot easier and make sure you give, give them five fingers. <laughs> <laughs> and so that sort of thing can make, make a, a, a picture a little more expressive and more dynamic. So anyway, that's the basic of drawing. And like I said, this is a rectangle, you know, pizza, which shows up in the book, is a triangle. So it's an ice cream cone. And see, these are just very, very basic shapes. And I'm, I'm pretty sure just about everybody can draw those three basic shapes. So. That's the secret. And then practice, 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 and do it for the rest of your life. And then you'll be an artist. <laughs> <laughs> when did you start drawing, Stacy? Or start oh, doing very art? Very young, very, very young. I was I was probably three when I when I remember really drawing. And I was I was defacing books and drawing on the wall with crayons and things. But so I was doing lots of things you're not supposed to do, but um, but my parents were pretty understanding and you know they got me art supplies <laughs> at some point so 
And I, I think the reason I started to draw initially is because I'm a twin. I have a twin brother and he's extremely verbal and he always has been. And so I was always the quiet twin. So he was doing all the talking for both of us and I was kind of in the background just drawing pictures. <laughs> so it's, I, kind of, I kind, of, kind of ended up in the career which um, I was destined to be in as drawing pictures for other people's words in a lot of, a lot of cases, so. How long did the art take for this book? Uh, it took about, books generally take nine months to a year. It's kind of like having a baby, but as far as I know, <laughs> but it, it's about, it is about, it's about probably start to finish a year, but you're not working for the entire year. You're, you're you know, I'll do the sketches, I'll send them in. And then they'll approve the sketches eventually. And then I'll do, you know, I'll start doing the finishes. So there are big breaks in the process. I'd love to hear about your artistic process. Like when you first begin, like how do you know, with the blank page, how do you first bring yourself to just make the, those, those, get those first ideas going? Do you have a particular ritual or process that you engage in? Yep. I sure do. That's a great question. I, because the white paper is really intimidating, you know, just starting making the first marks, that's the hard part. So I, and it took me a while to figure this out, but I just start painting right away. Like I'll, it's for, for me, it's easier to make a mess with a paintbrush than it is with a pencil or a pen. So I'll just start painting right away and I'll draw with a paintbrush. And that's, those, those are usually the first things I do because it's more expressive, I'm less intimidated, and I'll cover the paper with, with a wash of color sometimes, just to get started. Just so that white paper isn't staring at me and you know, daring me to make a mark on it. You know, I dare yeah, okay. you to mess up this beautiful piece of paper, so. Well, it makes me think of free writing, right? Because that's often what I do is just do sort of get words on the page, you know, and then hope that something starts to kind of um, bubble up from all those words so it's like free painting exactly yeah and that's that's cool. kind of the way it works I love seeing that drawing Stacy thank you so much for that demo sure, sure. let me see. I mean you make it look so easy <laughs> oh well you know it's it is easy for me now um I'm trying to stop my share hold on <laughs> how do I do this wait a minute um, wait a minute, wait, how do I stop my share? Let's see, I did it. You I did can... it, nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is easy for me now, but it took years and years and years of drawing without showing it to anybody. You know, that's, that's the first thing you have to do is practice. Lisa, when did you start writing? I mean, have you been writing all your life? I mean, I've been thinking about it since I was little, but you know, I got derailed by med school. <laughs> so, it tends to derail creativity. <laughs> so it was the serious writing began uh, when my kids were like little and I realized, you know, all the picture book reading was just mm -hmm. so rich and fun to do. And I was like, I want to do this. So that's when I really got going. So, um, but I have wanted to write all my life. So how long did this story take you? Cause I know all stories are different. Yeah, this one didn't take maybe as long as others, partly because of what Stacy said, there's so much information. Like there was just so much available. So I didn't have to spend a lot of time tracking stuff mm -hmm. down and, and, and hunting. Uh, um, and gathering the hunting and gathering phase was easier so there was just so much and the story kind of bubbled up more easily because too because there was the childhood story and it, it, it there was it, it was just so I would it took me like I don't know maybe less than a year to kind of pull it together um, and then I think we sold it the same year so um, that's fast yeah, no, that is really fast for, yeah. for nonfiction picture book. My other nonfiction picture books are just take a lot more work because of the hunting and gathering phase tends to be yeah. so much more laborious. Um, yeah, and yeah. the finding of the thread, right? The finding of the story. Yeah, yeah. Storyline. Uh, we have a question from the audience. I was going to ask you this too. What was what's the origin story of the jokes in the text? 
How did you get those? Were they in the original draft? They were hilarious, by the way, with the puppet. Yeah. Genius. That is that is a more boring story than than jokes deserve. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I can't. I think it was. I think when I realized that that um, you know they were such jokes. Actually, it was when I when I went to the factory tour. They have a lot of ice cream jokes in the tour. And when I heard that you know Ben was and and Jerry were such jokesters. I just went tracking. I mean, they're not obviously the people have heard most of them. They're not, they're sort of out, out there. So they're bubbling out in the world. And then I was like, oh, I want a, you know, a cream cheese joke and I want a graveyard joke. And so I just went hunting and they're sort of out in the public domain. Um, so it's not a very exciting story, but then I did have to figure out how, you know, how do you put them in there in a way that, that works and it doesn't interrupt the flow too much. And so I feel like it ended up being a pretty good balance. Yeah, it's good. And it, it does, like you said, it reflects their personalities. So yeah. um, that yeah. felt like it, they, they both felt like they belonged there yeah. too. Yeah. I love the jokes too. I mean, it, it was so nice to break up the page too and just have this little vignette of a, you know, a, a wise cracking cow in the <laughs> That was great. That was fun. Yeah. Really fun for me. Yeah. Have, they, have uh, Ben and Jerry seen the book? They have, they have. Um, our editor had some connection and got a copy to each of them and they wrote us a blurb um, or a little piece about it. So yeah, they liked it. I was really worried because I was like, oh no, they're going to say that the, the name of the pizza joint is wrong or something, right? Like they're going to find some detail, but that, that was not a problem, thankfully. That's so great. I was worried too, because <laughs> you're depicting people, you know, it's amazing. <laughs> how often they can be offended by that. It's like, I don't look like that. You know, it's, you know, my nose isn't that big. It's like an exaggerated right. feature. So, so it's kind of tricky, you know, but yeah. they did, they liked it. I was really pleased. Yeah, that was wonderful to find out. Yeah. I mean, I feel like there could be an ice cream truck tour with you both. Right. <laughs> And Ben and I Jerry, book tour. right? Book tour. Right. Yeah. That would be fun. That's all. I mean, that's a recipe for morbid obesity. I'm. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure I can handle that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to ask too. It, what you, I would love to know what both of you are working on now, because it would be nice to have a little, little seed. I don't know if you're allowed to talk about it, but seeds of things we have to look forward to from each of you, Lisa, do you have? Um, yeah, I mean, my, these books have been announced so I can mention them. Great. Um, I've got three in the offing, um, two next year. One is about forest bathing, which is based on um, a kind of a forest conservation preserve that we always go to in Maine. Um, and so that'll, I can't wait for the, uh, Koa Lee, who's a Vietnamese um, artist is doing the illustrations for that. And so I'm, the sketches are supposed to arrive any day now. So I'm Oh, excited. what a thrill. Yeah. And then um, a book about, a nonfiction book about Georgia O'Keeffe and kind of how about creativity permeated all aspects of her life from her cooking and her garden and her recipes, her clothing that she designed. Um, and Hadley Hooper, uh, who has done a couple of other books with Neil Porter, yeah. is illustrating that. And I think it takes a lot of chutzpah to um, do a book about Georgia O'Keeffe as an artist, right? So, yeah. She, she did one about Giacometti, um, the Giacometti brothers for Neil Porter. So um, I'm, I haven't seen any sketches yet on that one. So that's, that's ex I think that's 2024. So that's, that's exciting. That's so exciting. What about you, Stacey? Yes, I've uh, I got two offers last week, which is kind of interesting. That never happens, but um, and I can't really, you know, speak specifically about them. But I'm really excited about both of them. One of them is about, I will say, it's about a woman abstract expressionist painter, who's a magnificent painter. And um, the other is a book about, um, and all I can really say about it is it's a book about birds, but it's um, whimsical, it's funny. Um, 
And I'm really excited about that one too. And then um, I'm also working on a book, which I can talk about, which is uh, about Gilbert Stewart, the painter of um, George Washington's portrait that we see on the dollar bill. Mm. That famous portrait where it's an unfinished painting of George Washington, but it's really, it's how we think of George Washington because of the way he depicted him. And they had a really interesting dynamic, these two. Uh, George Washington really didn't like Gilbert Stewart at all. He thought he was frivolous and kind of, you know, not a very serious person. So it's their, it's their, um, it's their relationship, sort of their unlikely friendship. So it's, that's what I'm working on now. And then I'm writing a couple of stories too, which um, I can't really talk about either, but they're <laughs> super fun. They're super fun. So um, one of them is about a sense of smell and the other one is about being a twin. So that's kind of what I'm working on now. That's awesome. I mean, ideas are everywhere. You, you both just rattled off so many great ideas and so many books to look forward to. Everyone needs to make note, follow, follow Lisa Robinson and Stacey Interest on their social media pages so we can make sure to get the latest news when these things come out. We, it's, it's so fun. It's fun to have books to look forward to and favorite authors and favorite illustrators to follow. So thank you so much, both of you for spending time with us tonight. And I hope everybody gets your copy of The Sweetest Scoop. We have them at the Silver Unicorn Bookstore, of course, and silverunicornbooks.com if you need to have a copy shipped to you. We're happy to do that too. Um, congratulations to you both. Thank for the you. Sweet, Thank you sweet so much story. for hosting us. This was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yes. And thank you all, everyone out there in Zoom land for, for supporting independent bookstores and authors and illustrators. We're so happy to have you here tonight and, um, go finish. See, I didn't even, it's not even melted. So <laughs> you know how much I ate? Yeah. I was wrapped up in the story. <laughs> Good sign. Good sign. <laughs> thank you both. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Care you, everybody. Have a good night. You too. Bye-bye.